Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Hail and hello. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast podcast um as you know by now my name is jesse um midgard musings production very special guest joining us this week we're going to be bringing him on here in just a moment after we get some of our sundry things took care of as always if you're looking to support midgard musings and this podcast in any way be sure to check the show notes of this podcast in the description area uh, of the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link tree link that uh, down there, over there, up there, whatever. And uh, it's going to give you all place, all the th- types of ways and things that you can uh, support this, this, this endeavor, you know, Patreon, um, <clears throat> buying merchandise, uh, becoming a member of the channel, et cetera, et cetera. Check it all out, see what fits you. And your support is greatly appreciated. If nothing else, please follow me on the social media platforms that I do have available, which as of right now are Facebook, Twitter. There is an Instagram, but for some reason, the posts that I share to Facebook are not sharing to it. And as I mentioned before, um, I might have to just disconnect and reconnect. We'll, we'll, we'll try that. We'll try the old telltale or, or the old age old, not telltale, but the, but the age old turn it off and turn it on again trick that seems to fix a lot of IT related things um it's kind of like what happens when we sleep you know it's it's like the real life version of turning it off and turning it on again or as some people like to call sleep a um uh, a trial a free trial of of death so <clears throat> before we uh introduce today's guest i'm going to go ahead and light our incense today we have a combination of uh mugwort and um what's it called mugwort and balsam so i think that should be pretty good i expect it would be pretty good i like the you know you almost can't go wrong with most incense combos all right i think that does it so today's guest Um, who will be uh, joining us here in a short moment is my first international guest that I can recall um, having them on a show, right? Having them on a podcast. He lives in Australia, I believe in Queensland. We'll, we'll find out more. There's, there's a, there's a a city or a town or whatever on his bio that I'm not going to try to pronounce. It's, it's, one of those names that I just don't want to but don't want to butcher it. Um, but his name is James Crawford. Um, his business that he runs is called Raven Sage Healing, and he is, as I understand, a bit of a uh, shaman, um, medicine man, worker that that sort of thing. Um, he has a, a website, um, a Facebook page. 
And we're going to talk to him today a bit about that sort of thing. Um, I find it really interesting to talk with someone in that hemisphere, the southern hemisphere of the world, where, you know, most of the things that we do as Germanic heathens and pagans are of a more, you know, northern focus. Of course, things happening in Australia, they are, you know, in the southern hemisphere. So, for instance, our summer is their winter. Um, so this time of year, as I understand it, and we're going to get all that clarified from James when he joins us here in just a moment, it's, uh, it's winter time um, down under. So we're going to talk a bit about his, his business, um, his practices, where he originated from. Um, he does have a very um, Norse or, or Germanic like, you know, aesthetic to things, um, but not, in, not, not all entirely. He, 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 you know, his, his whole vibe, I guess you want, want to call it, is, is very, uh, you know, nature-based, um, animistic, as it were. So I'm looking forward to learning more about James and what he does with his, you know, Raven Sage healing um, business, how he's able to use his talents and his skills to serve uh, and provide a service to the community or the world or however it works. So I'm looking forward to learn more about him and what he does. And I'm excited to have him join me on the podcast and kind of uh, introduce you all to him as well. So let's go ahead and welcome in James Crawford of uh, Raven Sage Healing. All right, folks. So here we are. Welcome. Welcome, James Crawford of uh, Raven Sage Healing. Welcome to the podcast, man. Uh, thank you very much for having me on board, man. It's great. Great to join you. Great. It's great to have you. So um, I, I did introduce to the listeners and to the viewers um, a little bit about who you are. One of the first things I wanted to really touch on or mention was how exciting it is for me. First of all, I, I, I was recalling a bit about who I've had on the show and previous guests and friends. And uh, to my recollection, you're the first uh, international guest and the first person in the Southern hemisphere of the world to, to join here. And, you know, at the time that this podcast airs, it's going to be Thursday morning in the, in the States. Um, so that's going to be like, I think Friday night or, or, or you're like, what, or, or, keep me honest yeah, it's it's yeah, like 16 ahead. hours yeah you're like a day ahead of us <laughs> yeah so where are is it queensland that you're yes like whereabouts and okay so west of brisbane up in a up on top of a mountain there's a place called toowoomba and so that's where i'm nestled is right on top of the range about 770 meters above sea level okay and uh, it's a nice little spot, heaps of European trees. Um, there's lots of waterfalls, plenty of nature around, lots to connect to. It seems to be a nice spot. Sounds like a nice spot. I uh, and, and forgive me if this sounds, if, or if this offends you in any way, but uh, the Crocodile Dundee thing, the bush, right? That's like the wilderness, like heading into the bush or going into the bush. Uh, is, that, is that like an accurate representation of, of what you would call it or you know what's kind of going on out there and then the, the nature aspect of things in in australia we have two types of bush we have okay. a mixture of like european and australian bush together where you'll have big gums and then you'll have like pines we've got heaps of norfolk stuff here mm -hmm. um from wartime and then you've got um like a big masonic footprint in australia so there's lots of european trees so Lots of popular, lots of oaks, lot, you know, just about every type of oak. And wow. so you can be in a bushland area and it will really have this mixture. And then we also have pine forests. So just mm. absolute acres and acres of trees just in lines. But then we have natural bushland where it's gums and sandy, red, loomy soil. And it, depending where you are. And then... Um, it can be quite arid the further west you go. But where I am, it's kind of chunky bushland. You know, mm -hmm. there's lots of wattles. There's lots of different trees to make up the diversity. And so it's not, not very rainforesty. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of, I think it um, would be like hinterlandy. Sort of, there's a park here in town that they reckon is reminiscent of the Scottish Highlands. So nice. it's okay. a real mix. It's a mixture, you know? Yeah. All right. Right. I mean, it's, it sounds great. And uh, the other neat thing that I, as I remember, I mean, you're in the Southern hemisphere, it's summer here for us in the States. 
are you guys in your winter months now? Yeah, is, so is it... we just had we just had Yule on uh, the 21st of June. And so it's the middle of winter here in Australia. Wow. And so last night we had uh, one degree. That's how wow. cold you got. Yeah. yeah, I see. I see you bundled up in your hoodie and I'm over here. I mean, I got this whole, you know, get up going on here, but I'm indoors, uh, you know, but here, uh, you know, lately for us, it's been record breaking highs, you know, so you guys are, you know, the Celsius and it's been, you know, 40 plus Celsius yeah. around here. It's it's nuts. Wow. And yeah, I, uh, man, it's, it's a complete contrast. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, great. So thank you for kind of just giving us a little bit of a glimpse into the the Australian world and, and the land down under, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So it's great to have you. And uh, so Raven Sage Healing is your it's your business. It, I'm, I'm assuming it's just your livelihood. This is what you do um, to kind of keep the lights on or the water running. And um, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about what that is and what you uh, what you do in, in your in your line of work or your practices. So about seven years ago, I um, wasn't in a very good space mentally and physically as well. And so I worked on myself and that for, first of all, it like turns you towards normal types of religions. And then when you don't find solace in these things, you tend to sort of turn more inwards. And so I got in touch with my ancestors worked out, you know, who I was, where I came from. And then I started to, to help people just through the internet, through Facebook, friend circles and stuff like this. And then it started to grow. And so Raven Sage Healing for me is an offering that I offer back. Like my, the, my movements and stuff that I had going on at the beginning of my journey, like I pretty much didn't want to be here anymore. I wanted to evacuate the realm. And then they turned that all around. And so when I started to walk with my ancestors, this was very much a personal and very divine um, moment in my life. And so Raven's Age Healing is an offering back to the community, um, offering ways that work to heal, to help you stand into your power, to connect with your inner self, your inner cosmos. Um, and so... Some of the things that I offer with that is personal cleansings. And so they can be as mild as just going in and working on the energetic system, the heavals or chakras, and fixing their flows, removing cords and stuff that weigh us down. Or the work can be as in-depth as entity removal court and contract breaking, you know, like wiping timelines and stuff mm -hmm. like this. And so very much when I got into this, um, I wanted to wake everyone into their ancestors. You know, it's just a magical thing. But now I'd like to free humanity from the darkness that we all hold, you know. Mm. And so that's, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I offer sound healings, personal healings, at times land healings, um, in Australia, but the, you know, the culture is very diversified. So, you know, you might see 15 people and one of those people will be a Norseman, like an actual person who recognises their lineage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a very diverse culture in Australia. You could have um, from the Asiatic people through the Indigenous people through to, you know, like Hawaiians and Swedes and all sorts of different people. And then there's the colonialist people, which are just the normal Australian population, you would say. Mm. Um, and they're very disconnected, very, very disconnected from who they are, um, what they're capable of, um, things like this. So, so is, is, is everything that you do with Raven Sage Healing local to Australia? In other words, is, do your services extend beyond the, into like the internet or is it strictly local to to your area so the stuff like land clearing and then um a lot of the sort of mentoring and stuff like this i've i've done locally but ha it has extended outwards so i have mm. had clients from the states that i've helped but it depends on the client and their perspective of their inner self and so usually i'll work with them over the phone 
for a quick consult of like, you know, half an hour and to work mm-hmm. out their degree of ability. Because if you're going to help someone over the phone, you have to understand their ability. Because basically it's over the phone, whether it's video call or uh, just sure. a, a voice call. And so once you've put, ascertained that the person can actually, you can actually help them, then yes, this can be done, you know, from one side of the world to the other. It's just about the person and being their guide and understanding and being intuitive enough to connect with their energy, you know? Yeah, I do. Um, I, of course, am, uh, you know, I don't know if you've, you know, listened or, or, or followed the Midgard Musings and, and now the podcast, it's kind of one and the same. It's, 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 it's my show, right? Like, I mean, I run the thing, but I, I, I keep the podcast, the podcast, and I, uh, keep it a bit random and we talk about all different kinds of things here but it is obviously a very uh, northern European Norse and Germanic uh, centric uh, focus of, of paganism polytheism right so a lot of what I talk about is has to do with that spectrum or, or at least that focus on worldviews and things and it's interesting to me that you have immersed yourself into um, this this uh, this this service this this thing that you provide and and how it um, requires you to be in touch with other cultures because of the diversity aspect. Yes. How, how has that, how has that improved? Because you talked about where you were, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when this idea first came to you and then you first kind of launched it, how has, you know, getting into that diversity and, and, and it's being exposed to so many different things, how has that helped you in your growth? And also how has it presented any challenges, if any? So if we can put race aside for, for the context of our discussion, we have different magics within each of us, okay? And so I've found through working with these different cultures that they have their, their magic or their culture and they've got only that. And so throughout the mixtures of people, you can have different magics. And so in Australia, we have a big diversity of mixed people. And so that's as in like non, not just full European. So like I'm a full European person. I've got Celtic Germanic. Okay. And so mm-hmm. in Australia, we have lots of people and I suppose you would in the States where they've got mixed ethnicities inside of themselves. Absolutely. Well, right. when I first started to help people go inside of themselves, I'd get to this point within them and they would present two sets of elders. And inside of me, there's just all these white guys. But inside of some of these people, there would be Indigenous elders and then European elders. Mm -hmm. And so I very much had to immerse myself. And being in the land where we are, any sort of healing that you're taking on, any magic, any ritual, anything that you're doing, if you want it to be cohesive and very um, quick in its manifestational, you know, programming, then you have to honour the land where you are. And to honour this land, the Indigenous people are the land because of the mm-hmm. symbolic nature that they've had for like millions of years, right? And so it was only a matter of time, and I suppose this would be for any other person um, on an Indigenous land that's not their own, is that when you become very spiritually in tune with things, it's only natural that they start to talk to you because mm-hmm. they're the spirit of the land. And so I had to then understand what they're talking about. And so in my experiences with the Indigenous um, spirits and the language that they can talk it's very reminiscent of Gaelic and so lots of the words sound very Gaelic when you're speaking with them um, they, they they have the power same sort of power as the angelic host or our ancestor host that can um, shift the language around so that we can understand so if I don't typically talk Aboriginal Indigenous languages but I get a, a real good feeling of the expressions of what they're saying. Okay. And yeah. so what, what it did for me was on my personal journey was to understand that this, this uh, human being thing is we're part of the ecosystem. Mm. Okay. Mm. And so like within a forest, if humans don't go there, it overgrows and actually suffocates itself. They did studies into it. And so we're part of this ecosystem, right? So then wouldn't it make sense that us as individual races of beings would be levels in that ecosystem? Mm. And so 
it's forced me to learn and understand my place within the ecosystem and my connection to things. And so, yeah, it diversified my practice. It didn't change my inner belief system. And so I still talk to my holy divines, my ancestors, and bring them on. And at certain points, you know, for, for nine out of 10 healings that I do, if they're just like basic healings, it's just me, me and my energy. But if I'm ever challenged by anything, I've got like five that just come and stand with me, you know? And, and these are, I call them my grandfathers because it's like they're, you know, one's older than the other and the other's older than the other, you know? Like, yeah. But they're all ancient type of thing. Yeah. 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 No, that seems very reminiscent to, because I mean, Australia as, as a, as a, as a place, all right, it, it's, it was colonized much like the North America, like much like United States. Right. I mean, just like there we have indigenous uh, natives of, of the land. And so I, I hear what you're saying and it resonates um, with me more than you might think, because, you know, when I started on my journey of uh, paganism, as it were, you know, I, I latched onto something that seemed very familiar to me um, because of my roots, right? My ancestry. And it was like, okay, this makes more sense to me than the Christianity that I was raised in to go back to the pagan roots, to go back to a time before the influence of Christianity. Right. And that was six, seven, eight, almost eight. So yeah. Between about seven, almost going on seven years ago for me. Yeah. But now, and, and more so recently, um, I've, again, not really changed those core beliefs, but it, 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 I'm definitely not the same person that I was then. And it's not even so much about what a lot of people might recognize as the gods or the goddesses. There's, there's that for me, but how I'm developing as a person and in, and in my own spirituality, because I, I, I don't know how you see it, but I see a difference between religious practices and spiritual practices. I'm tapping more into the spirituality and getting in tune with the things even older than the gods right as they were there's like you say spirits of the land that have been here for so long that are becoming a bit more uh, i'm becoming more connected with you know i i've, I've made it a, almost a daily practice to leave my house walk outside barefoot in the ground to, to to ground and connect and to get those energies you know and it may you know it may seem just like silly to a lot of people but i'll tell you what man like it, it it's so healing and it's so beneficial to me to just disconnect from modern times and even you know even if it's just walking out into the yard or by the river or something and just get my bare feet grounded into the earth yeah. it taps you That's into a, things that are primal you know yeah yeah these things are far beyond us the, these things existed far beyond the humans so when we speak and we tap, tap into these energies they they hold, hold more than us they care for more than us and so the love that exudes from them and then the, the path work that you take from nature when you step into nature, it can be huge, it can be absolutely transformational for the, for the person, individual. Yeah. You know? With, uh, and I, you know, if I, if I venture off into places that are just like a bit too crazy, we don't want to get into it, that's fine. And, and feel free to just say, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, what do you, what, what's your perception on things that are, are definitely healing that are maybe non-conventional forms of healing things like psilocybin hallucinogens those types of things where where do you see that play into the role of the modern shaman or, or what because these things have been part of ancient practices across many cultures we you know we know this especially indigenous healers medicine men shamans that sort of thing you know it's it's been there for so long and now there's like a a, a stigma on on so much of these things because of their perhaps uh, abuse during certain decades and certain times and, and, and where they've been legislated or not legislated. Um, what, what is your thought on that type of stuff? If you're willing to discuss, and if not, it's totally fine. We can move on to something else. Yeah, absolutely willing to discuss. So my yeah. belief on this, my feelings around it is that yes, it's been abused the way that they restricted it, probably not a very positive thing, but you still see it being abused today. Okay. So what its purpose was, that if you had something, you went to the shaman or the healer, all right, and they said, okay, so I feel this way. They didn't just say, go and have a mushroom, go and have some ayahuasca, okay? Mm -hmm. You 
legwork and the hard work yourself. And if it was unattainable, okay, or something dramatic that was really affecting the overall tribe, then then the, the medicines would be offered up. Okay, we jump at it these days because it's a quick way of like gaining momentum into our spiritual path. Mm. It's also a quick way of entering, entering, entering yourself into the mental hospital. Like <laughs> you're dealing with, with stuff that you haven't had any spiritual background into mm-hmm. to then uh, let it unfold. Once you've had spiritual background into these things and then you start to have these substances, you understand what they are. You understand that they're helpers. They're not the, they're not the tool to do the job. They're the help to do the job. Mm. And so people get it a bit confused and they're like, oh, we'll just go away to an ayahuasca ceremony and I'll yeah. be healed. No, you won't be. You'll have no. all of the tools to heal yourself, okay, but you've got to do the work, okay? And so I think the culture around it is wrong, okay? Mm. And when people do the research, they get a bit sidetracked on the, on the high of it instead of listening to the cosmonauts that are talking about that you don't do it all of the time. This is something that yeah. you're going, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's very much like um, the drum, Okay, it's no different to a drum. The drum is a tool to get you there, but you still got to do the work when you get there. Yeah, it's like okay. a like a catalyst or or the thing that carries you, like you say. Uh... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I just need to get a blanket out of this cavity. Yeah, no, I mean, with with uh, and in w- what's interesting to me is is is, you know, I, I when I started into my path you know, like I said before, it was very, very c- central focus on the gods, right? Deities, because that's what was popular. That was what was very easily accessible. That's what kind of drew me into it. Oh, these are the gods of my ancient ancestors. And where do I find myself in that whole thing? Right? Well, yeah. after I got past, I guess, maybe the honeymoon phase of, you know, the strength of Thor, the wisdom of Odin, the this, the, that, the other, whatever, you know, I did. I, I, I went inward and it's like, well, what about the ancestors? Because the gods are the gods. And in my views, they are not omnipotent. They are not omniscient. They are, they are, they're doing their own thing. And they're not, they're not for the large part, really too concerned with us in the mortal plane, you know, not to the everyday extent who are concerned. And then the ones that are tied into all of the day-to-day type stuff are our ancestors and the people that we've come from and the roots that we grow from the literal sources of our, of our life. And so my path took a turn to focusing more on that. And then now it's like going even deeper into ancestral roots and getting back to like the whole primal ancestry thing, you know, the, the, the time before time, as it were, um, and just really absorbing that. And then using those types of tools, whether it be the, the, the uh, psychedelics or, or, or sound, right. You say drums, rattles, those audible things that um, kind of help guide you into that state of being of, of connecting because with all of the noise that's going on in the world around us, whether we live in a city or near a road or train tracks or planes fly over, right. There's so many, there's so many things that are happening around us on a day-to-day basis that are just distractions to keep us from, staying close to that i don't know where the heart is and those efforts to reconnect and get back to it or like you do you have to do the work you have to put the work and you can't just take a pill or pop a mushroom or you know what i mean like you can't just expect that to be the thing that you know fixes it all right yeah no 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 and in, in my experience i've done both so like I've done the, the actual healing bit, right? Where you go in and you meditate, you do all the things and journey through into yourself. But I've also taken substances to know mm-hmm. that this, this is just a tool. This is the drum, okay? And so, yes, it's easy and it's quick, okay? But mind you, when they measure with science, the drum still beats it. The only thing that beats a drum is DMT, okay? When you're hitting your drum, four beats. One, two, three, four. And the emotional body has separated from the mental body. So you're already in an altered state of mind, you know? Mm. So that's, that's the only thing that beats that is probably DMT. Yeah. Because, because mushrooms, you're looking at, you know, long time to get into your high and then 
you're high. Whereas the drum has already taken that part. It's already part of you. And so I, I tend to not do lots of psychedelic stuff, but I do lots and lots and lots of drumming, you know. On my yeah. work week, I drum, each client gets drummed. I drum between clients, you know, and then I'm bringing in different things like primal sound and stuff like this. Because when you're in these altered states, if you add things, certain things, then it can help to raise you up a bit more. It can help to move away things that aren't very good, you know. When you're in yeah. these in, in these mushroom states and DMT states, it's so wow that you forget mm -hmm. your tool. You forget all of the things that you're there for. Yeah. I you know, uh it's no, you're right. Cause I've, I've experienced the, I've experienced those, um, one of those substances and it's, you know, it's, it's so jarring when, you know, you're, you're, you're back to a state almost of, of, uh, of infancy, you know, learning new things, you know, and then coming back from a time coming back from an experience like that, um, learning just ba or relearning, you know, basic things, motor functions, right. Speaking, swiping a credit card, dialing a phone, like all of these stuff that you're just, you know, doing on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. And then all of a sudden you're like, what do I do with this again? <laughs> you know, it's like, you got, you got to relearn all of this stuff that, you know, had gotten its like little wires pulled out and be like, nah, we don't need that anymore. At least not for the moment. We're going to just yank this thing out and focus on, you know, it, but yeah, like I say, you know, or like you were saying that the uh, the long term uh, effect of it all is, is is I think done in the more rhythmic healing, you know, and, and those types of things. It's it's getting to that point since I've experienced those things, those substances, right? Is is it's like a part of me was unlocked at that point, and it stayed accessible to where you're right. It's it's not something that you engage or or indulge in. Um, regularly or infrequently but yeah that's wild i've found i've come across people that perpetually do it and 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 oh, so man. yeah I've, I've been around okay. those people that, like i knew a man that would perpetually take um dmt and so once i got around him he started to then speak in this foreign language and what was happening was a part of himself an aspect that he would brought through and so this was an indigenous man and so there's lots of terrible culture in Australia around indigenous and white people. And so he's, he's brought through this spirit that, and he'd been doing it like all of his time, he's, he's on the DMT, right? He'd be recording the language and the talkings and um, everyone around him was like, what the hell's going on here? And I got around him this one time that he, he was doing it and um, the spirit came through. And this is where some of the lingo from my inner journeys had helped. And so I, I recognized the language that he was trying to portray to me. Mm. And so I, val I validated him in that state. And so this, guy, this guy's mid DMT and he's starting to cry. Like, and he's full cognitive, like he's looking at me, but it's not mm. him. Yep. And so the wounds are there and they want healing, except nobody is spiritual enough to be able to witness the healing and validate the healing for the spirit. Okay, and so that's that's the big problem. That's it outlined. Okay, mm. is that we're, we're blaming or putting too much responsibility into plant medicine when we haven't done the work before we got there. Yeah. You know, jump, jumping in a plane and flying to Puerto Rico or wherever you want to go and seeing the shaman. That's mate, you're not living the way he's telling you to live. You're yeah. going back and you're drinking Coca-Cola and eating red meat and all this other stuff. You know, you think we gotta, we've got to honour the whole thing, okay? Sure. And I know, I know that this comes from their own mess, but, like, they want people to come to the country, so it brings money and brings all of these things. But I think part of the practice is being missed here, you know? Probably get shot down <laughs> in a flaming mess, but that's where I stand with it. I believe that you know, rattles, drums, jangles, deep breathing is, is what you need, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you've, yeah. got something that, if you've got something that with all of those things, 
you still can't move through, then we should jump into the plant medicine. You know, I like that, you know, start with the basic start with the fundamentals. I mean, you know, I've have, you know, you see, I've got my drum and there's a behind yeah. it. There's a, there's a, it's, it's a, it's a rattle. It's, it's a bearskin rattle, but it's, it's fashioned after I'll just grab it because it's fashioned oh, yeah, after nice. a hammer, you know, but it's a paleolithic yeah. style that that's, you know, in cave art, you know, so that's great. Yeah. And uh, this is made by um, the Olivetier workshop. Uh, yeah, J.M. Olivetier yeah. is, uh, I, I've talked about him. I've had him on the podcast and he's, he's local here to the U.S. and in the state of North Carolina. And, and we've, um, and he lives on top of this mountain. He has a beautiful place up in the mountains away from, from civilization. I mean, he's, he's pretty remote. And, uh, you know, I visited him. Uh, we become friends. We we're friends online for, you know, a longer time than we met and finally met in person, but just like going there and seeing, you know, the space that he creates this art and, and creates these tools for people, you know, it's, it's so genuine and it's so hard and he lives it, man. Like, and that's, what's so great about having the, the, the one-on-one -on -one connection. Cause you know, I've talked a lot about um, this whole online community as it were the internet's a big place and and these these facebook groups or these social media forums right whatever they might be um they only i feel they only cover the aspect of of community to a very small degree it, it doesn't you know provide the uh interpersonal relationships that you you experience when you're face to face with somebody in person and that's you know that was one of the things i was like curious genuinely curious about um yes. with what you do with raven stage healing is you know the differences between or or are there differences the results uh between what you get to experience face to face with someone or, or with them in person versus what you do to like maybe a long distance thing is is there a noticeable difference between the type of work you do in those scenarios so when I do things in person here, um, I would, so in person, you, you, you've got the person, right? And so if it's not in person, then you would lay their energy down or you would, in, I would in my mind be painting a scenario where they're here or I'm right beside them. So then I can access their higher self. And that's, that's your inner filga. And so your spirit self, right. and that's the yeah. one I want to talk about. And so it's the one that drives, okay? It's, it's you, the outer interface. It's, it's the one that gets flooded by the inner filgers, desires of what it wants to achieve and how it's going to get there, you know? And so I want to talk with it. And so in person, I would just be asking you talking this way. And then if we're over the phone, I would be relying more on my ability to be able to project my energy into your field. And then once the connection's made, um and then i can pretty much access the person's inner inner cobwebs or inner fabrics you know um and very much almost like mind reading except it's got to be done with the higher self so i can't just read the person's mind but if their higher self is on board and wants the healing to come through then they'll tell me all of the darkest secrets about the person mm -hmm. and that ha seems to be able to happen in person and over the energy of the world okay um all i seem to be able to need to, to tie into people is their name their full name like their birth name and then their date of birth and because then you just like it's a reference so you're just like i want this person of this birthday and then a relative of where like a, a place where they are so like you're in america so like i would look you in america i wouldn't mm. be placing you in india you know what i mean yeah yeah and so then energetically you connect and because the universe is not really, you know, thousands of kilometers to you, it is just boom to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if you can get yourself high enough into the fabrics above, then you can just drop in on the person. Okay. I, th I suppose like astral projection. Astral. Yeah. I, so I say like some people might think that as a, as a term to be relative that they can understand, yeah. but yeah. 
some some of these things like I've been able to do some of these things since I was born, um, mm. and some of the other things are, uh, have come on since I've awoken, and so my inner abilities to be able to sort of um, you know <sighs> traverse traverse the tree of life would be that was uh, a birth gift. And so when I was younger, I was traumatized at birth and that freed up my spirit from the human carcass. And so I live in the other realm a bit more than this one. So I know where to go and what to do. And, but that didn't come without learnings of like playing with the wrong people, going to the wrong places. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you kind of, you know, you walk down the wrong alley and you know, it gets pretty dicey. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a really, <laughs> that's a really interesting thing to think about that the, uh, cause I, I too, you know, not that I have memory of it, but I, uh, had a traumatic birth. I, I was born dead clinically, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, it was, uh, not obviously nothing that I would have a, an obvious memory of, but the fact is that it happened. And, um, so I don't know, I guess I never really thought about where I'm at in my life now, my spirituality, and even everything that I've done up and through my life before I kind of found myself in a, in a spe specific path or a specific way of just everything even before then makes sense more to me, you know, just where I found um, almost a, a, a natural fit, you know, it just like the shoe fit, the glove fit, it, it, it felt like home, just being in that place that some people might seem as uh, mystic you know yeah yeah you do find your home when you when you settle into the idea that you're part of all of this and that 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 all of this is far bigger than you could actually conceive then that takes the driving driving wheel away you know like mm. you have to be able to relax into the path into the role and become like surrender to yeah. the great creation and because like the creation is greater than all of the gods in itself you know, you're talking about the creation of Niflheim and Muspelheim in themselves. The entity, the life force that created them is, yeah. is the life force that you're falling in line with. Okay? Yeah. And so it's in this, in this hunt of true God self, true divinity, you know, to stand in those powers like, like the, the Thor, like the Woden, stand into these powers to understand what, yeah, what they are for you and, and where they're going to take you. Yeah, and, and how the growth and surrender to the growth. You know, you know that. Yeah, that's uh, you know, and and I'll go back to this, and I know we're running short on time. I'm kind of keeping track. I think we got about maybe ten minutes or so left for yeah. you before you need to go. So I'm gonna wrap this up quickly. But just to touch a little bit on that, um, my my awakening experience, my you know moment where throughout all my spirituality, the time where I was like, okay, now it's time to kind of hurdle through this transformation the stage of realizing that the size of me in comparison to everything and, and get 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 relative you know taking those substances it was done with a group it was done with trusted people it was done with those who i've counted as as brethren brothers to me right um and that whole experience left me with a feeling of in the moment just how much a part of everything i am but how big I am, but how small I am. Like, it was a weird conundrum. I don't know. It was like, I would walk 20 feet and feel like I just left the world. And then at the same time, I'm like looking at like this, the sense of time, you know, like three hours pass. And I felt like I'd been there for an eternity. Like it was so skewed, you know, yeah. the, 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 the concept of space, time, where I'm at in it, experiencing it all, knowing the trees, the, the, the stars, the air, the wind, the moon, like just everything, how much in tune I was with it all and, and realizing that this is the way it's always been. I've just never been able to see it, experience it, hear it, know it. Yes. And, and, and just getting that moment of clarity and being like, I will never be the same again. <laughs> and I haven't. I, I mean, I haven't. Like I said, it's not like I've needed to be that guy that goes and just is like, all right, let's, you know, take a hit of this, do a drop of that whatever no it's like you're saying you know the drumming the sitting by the river the rattles the all of those things that are just now they sound different they feel different than they ever had before yeah absolutely 
And if you look back in your past, you were probably chasing these things through hip hop, rock and roll, all of these types of music have the four beat track built into them. And so mm-hmm. the four beat track is what gets you there. And then if you want to really get there, you use the eight beat Slifnir track. So eight hoops and into there. And so this is what's in trance music. That's why they call it trance music. You go to those clubs and they've got all the lights on and everyone's like a bit out of their mind. It's because mm-hmm. they've got an eight track going there and <laughs> everyone's tranced. Yeah. You know, so we were seeking this out. You know, if you look back in your past, you will have been sort of, you know, funneled towards certain energetics of music. And then if you look into the basis of the music, you'll be like, wow, that's got all that going on. I needed all of that to be able to detach from my mind. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> nuts yeah man. It's, it's wild um so i did I, I wanted to give you you know a moment before the the, the podcast is over before i um you know say my adieu and, and turn you over to your day um yeah. so raven sage healing it's kind of like rolling out the red carpet for you for people that are wanting to talk to you more about all of this and, and learn more about what it is that you do where can they find you and and how can they get in touch with you Okay, so I'm available on Facebook at Raven Sage Healing. It's a Facebook page. And I also have a website, ravensagehealing.com, all one word, .com. Um, and so jump on there. It has my availability. Um, the availability works for international clients as well. I just book out the time. Um, and so there's a couple of different ways I can help you. I could do sound healing. I could do mentoring where we just work on your path and where you're going tail of that it doesn't really matter what spiritual belief system you work with i'm able to work with each and every one of them um but yeah i sort of tailor more towards the north guy norse guys um and the germanic face that's just where i sit with it but it's you know i don't thumb in my thumb my nose in the air at you know anyone else that wishes to come along and be healed or shown a way to heal themselves okay and um yeah Pretty much. And then I'm going to continue to do podcasts like this, I think. And uh, so, yeah, keep a lookout for me. I'll be around. Fantastic, James. Yeah. So uh, everybody, I'm going to leave, uh, you know, his, you know, James's website, the Facebook page. It's all going to be, you know, annotated wherever. If it's the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. If you're watching this on the YouTube premiere, it's going to be linked down in the description. Um, and like James says, you know, he's open to, to all different approaches to religion, spirituality. He's, he's, he's an aid and a help to, to anybody. So for anyone that's listening, watching, that's maybe not sure, maybe he's just looking for a consultation. I'm going to, you know, he's the guy to go to. All of his contact information is going to be down there. Um, so, yeah, James, if you don't mind, um, we'll, we'll, we'll stop, you know, broadcasting live. I'll, I'll say my adieus to everybody and I'll just touch base with you a bit offline and, and thank you properly. Say, but yeah, go ahead. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you to you for having oh, yeah, me man. on today. It has been an honor. You do great work. Keep up the splendid work, my brother. <laughs> I appreciate that, James. It's nice to have the, uh, the, the vote of confidence. So, yeah, everybody that's listening, watching, uh, and participating in today's broadcast, uh, be sure to support James as well. You know, check out what he does and, and uh, follow. He, he has some really awesome content. Like I say, I, I follow him on, on Facebook and he, he is always posting really inspirational things that really keep your mind engaged and thinking about where you're at, right? It's very inspirational. It's very helpful. So thank you, James, for being my guest today. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck in uh, you know, the future of, of uh, Raven Sage Healing and everything that you do. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So everybody that's listening and watching today, thank you very much. Don't forget to support this podcast by liking, following, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all of the fun stuff, all the ways that you can engage um, and support the podcast, Midgard Musings as a whole. The link tree link is always posted in the description and show notes. Hail to you all. And until we see each other again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors walk with you.